One of the really neat things about simple feature objects is that you can actually plot them using the ggplot2 package. So while the plot function that is supplied with the SF package is really very powerful and quite useful for plotting SF objects, many of us prefer ggplot2 just because it's this huge ecosystem has all these associated things that we can do with it. And so if you want to plot SS, SF objects with ggplot2, it's actually very straightforward. So ggplot2 helpfully provides a geom specifically for SF objects called geom underscore SF. And this is typically adequate for using ggplot2 to produce graphics for SF objects. So there may be a special case where it doesn't work quite as well and you have to manipulate things more closely, but I'm going to give you a few examples showing you uh, when it's pretty easy. So if you want to use ggplot2 to plot an SF object, then the SF object is going to be passed as the data argument to the ggplot function. geom underscore SF is going to be the geometry that you want to use for the data. And the XY coordinates of the, X, the SF object are automatically going to be mapped to the X and Y aesthetics of the geometry. So you don't have to, to specify the coordinates at all. That's already taken care of. But if you want to change other aspects of your plot, then you can still use aesthetics like color, line type, and fill, whether that's map to a variable uh, or, or something else in order to make the appropriate customizations to your graphic. If you only want to plot the geometry list column, in other words, the geometry objects of each observation, then you actually don't have to specify any aesthetics. So if we take our COVID underscore US SF object, we pass that to ggplot and then we uh, add the SF geometry to that, then we get the geometry, uh, the geometry list column object displayed here. And so this looks really similar to some of the, the previous plots uh, that we saw earlier uh, in this tutorial, tutorial, but now we're doing it with ggplot2. So this looks like a typical ggplot2 graphic, which is really cool. Automatically adds the, the, the axes here so we can see where we are in terms of the longitude and the latitude. Most of the time, you're probably not going to want to do this, but I did want to at least show you that you can plot the geometry list column pretty easily in ggplot2. Um, however, you're probably more interested in creating a map that colors the different regions or the different geometry objects according to some variable. And uh, this is actually called a choropleth map. I could have mentioned that earlier, but I didn't. Um, but basically, when you have geometric objects like regions and things like that, and you fill them according to some variable, that's an example of a choropleth map. And so if you want to create a choropleth map uh, using ggplot2 for an SF object, we do pretty much the same thing as before. We just need to map an attribute to the appropriate aesthetic. And then ggplot2 is going to automatically scale that and take care of the rest. So in this case, I'm going to map the death underscore rate underscore 100k attribute to the fill aesthetic uh, of geom underscore sf. And when I do that, I get the map here. And so you can see that we can see the death rate. And uh, you know this is going to show the same patterns as some of our previous plots. It's just a little harder to tell because this color scale is not fantastic, at least in my opinion. So the darker colors represent lower death rates in this plot. Uh, and so we see once again that Vermont is really low. Uh, the lighter blue, brighter blue represents the higher death rates. And so we still see Delaware is kind of looking a little bit more, a little higher, has higher death rate than the other regions, but it's, it's kind of difficult to tell. And so we really want to use a different color palette. And one of the things I just, I just wanted to point this out just because I think it's really useful you can in fact change the color scale used pretty easily uh, even for geom underscore sf geometries and so uh, i'm actually going to use the color space package here there's some built-in ones in ggplot2 actually for the viridis color palette uh, we could have used the viridis light package to do this as well but the color space package is just so powerful i wanted to illustrate it really quickly and so basically what i do is i'm going to take the exact same plot as before this plot right here but i'm going to add a, I'm going to add scale underscore fill underscore continuous underscore sequential in the color space package. And essentially what this does is this is, allows us to change a continuous fill scale for, uh, this, for this aesthetic over here, for this geometry, uh, 
quite easily. And so basically I'm going to specify palette equals Viridis because I want the Viridis palette. And instead of having to manually specify things, uh, it automatically uses the Viridis palette to uh, update this. Though I just noticed actually that this is actually rotated, so we probably want to reverse this. So in, in contrast with the previous graphic, actually, uh, the yellow is going to be the places with the lowest death rate, so that's still Vermont, and the places with the dark blue is going to be, uh, which is Delaware, is going to have the highest death rate. So you can see how we can change the color scale. This is actually not really any different than typical ggplot2, uh, but you just need to be creative and think about how you want to use color palettes to appropriately display your spatial data. I was going to end the video, but then I decided that I should keep going because I really wanted to show you a better way of using the Viridis color palette uh, in ggplot2 to plot simple feature objects. And so essentially we can do the same thing as before, but ggplot2 actually has the Viridis color palette built in now. And so uh, I can add the scale underscore Viridis underscore scale underscore fill underscore Viridis underscore C for continuous here because we want a continuous fill a continuous we're mapping we're filling a continuous variable and i specify option equals viridis and i'm going to get the same viridis color scale um, that we saw up here okay and so this is good i guess actually it's not the exact same color scale because it's it's continuous here it's not um it's not breaking into, into bins like it was before uh, but this is simpler, right? We don't have to use the color scale package or anything like that. This is built directly into ggplot2. If I wanted to reverse the colors, then I could do that by using direction equals negative one. And you can see that instead of having yellow at the top and blue at the bottom, we now have blue at the top, or uh, yeah, the dark blue at the top and yellow at the bottom. So we can reverse the order of the color scales if we want. And as far as I know, the ggplot2 package does not currently include the Kividus colors, the color palette uh, within it. Maybe that will change in future versions, but you can get access to the Kividus color palette through the Viridis package, uh, which is what we're going to use here. And so you might need to install this if you don't have it installed, but they have a scale underscore Viridis function in the Viridis package. And so I can take the same ggplot that we have previously worked with, but now I'm going to add scale underscore fill underscore viridis. And the option here actually specifies different palettes. And if you look at the documentation, E is the Kividus color palette for some reason. Um, and there's A, B, C, and D. Uh, but E is the one that we want, E is Kividus. And so if we use this command, then you can see we actually get the Kividus color palette like we have seen in our previous graphics. So as I close this video, I guess I just want to point out that we really have only covered a small, a small amount of information about simple features and working with them. And so if you really want to find out more information about simple features and working with spatial data in R, any of these resources that are listed here would be fantastic. Uh, the SF package authors have essentially a whole website dedicated to the SF package. And so you can find more information there about what the SF package can do. There's a book, Geocomputation with R by Robin Lovelace. It talks a lot about the SF package, but some other aspects from a more general theoretical and philosophical perspective. And then there's also Spatial Data Science with Applications in R by Edzer Pebisma and Roger Vivent, who are some of the main authors of the SF package. This is a separate book, uh, but it covers a lot more of the theory and methods and things like that in relation to the SF package. So you might consider looking at these if you're really interested in working with spatial data in R, though hopefully what I've been able to provide for you has been helpful in at least getting a start and introduction into that subject.